so Are you excited to see your bride? Yeah. It's there you are. I bet. I've been waiting for this. Such a joy to meet you. Yeah, seriously, it's... I've seen this office before, just on camera, and now it's actually surreal to be sitting here in front of you. So thanks for having me. Uh, you came all the way from New Jersey. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Wow. <laughs> I'm honored. And so tell me about self-care. So self-care is for everyone. We partner with artists and they submit artwork around mental health and self-care and we print it on garments. It's our way of sharing a message with someone without saying any words. So you can just see someone on the street and smile because their message says you are enough or whatever the artwork says. And it's been such a journey. And honestly, I found out about my ADD diagnosis into the business about a year and a half. And so I felt like it gave me so many answers about my whole life, but now being in this role as a founder, co-founder of this business, I recognize all the responsibilities I have and I wanna be in control of my brain. I want to be able to you know, make a difference obviously, and I'm super passionate about that, but sometimes I feel like my brain holds me back. And so I came here because I wanna really learn about my brain and figure out what I can do to be a better person for this company because this community relies on us. We have a big Instagram community, which I'm so grateful for, um, but it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of attention, a lot of focus. And I meet with so many people and I don't wanna let people down. I feel like sometimes um, with the ADHD, things like emails or texts can be overwhelming for me, which feels even silly to say out loud because- Why? I, th I think most people feel like emails and texts are overwhelming. <laughs> well, that's good right? to hear. I mean, we, yeah. we did not evolve to do emails. Right, right. That's <laughs> it does, fair. It doesn't that makes sort me feel of better. fit. Uh, yeah. We just got flooded over the last yeah. 25 years with this digital age yeah. when our brains sort of evolved to write down paper. Yeah. And so. All of a sudden, our attention span went to like eight seconds. Yeah. Where goldfish is nine seconds. I always say this is evolution gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I know. I feel like the phone, all of the dings, the pings, all of them are happening at once. I'll open up my phone. And if you're anxious. And if you're anxious. Then it overwhelms you more. Yeah. Because one of the things I noticed, because I read your history. I looked yeah. at your scans and sort of have an idea what's going on, but it's not just ADD. Yeah. There's a lot of anxiety. Yeah. And one of the things I want to sort of tease apart, because sometimes it can be hard to tell the difference. Mm. Who diagnosed you with ADD or ADHD? Um, it was my therapist. We had so many conversations. The same things kept coming up. It was like this theme, this weave of things. And she's like, have you ever looked into ADHD? And I was like, I've thought about it, but I kind of like pushed it to the side. And then I went to my laptop and I was like, I'm just going to do a little test online. And then I started reading about it. And it was like every little symptom that they talked about. I was like, oh, oh. it was like, me on a piece of paper and I was like so other people deal with this as well and it just like started to be flooding with answers and then I leaned on your books and all of the all of the information that you have online which I had your book before but I didn't have the ADD knowledge or anything like that so I thought that was really interesting so once I started reading I was like so relieved I was like oh my god there's answers and there's reasons and um I think it made me feel yeah, just more, more confident that like, that there's a way out of this and there's a way to manage it. So um, more understood. More, yeah, more understanding for sure. But did anybody look at your brain? No. Not until today. Not until today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it's a little bit of a puzzle. Hmm. Anxiety for sure. Yeah. And, you know, when you pay attention, there's a whole bunch of things that can interrupt it. Yeah. And anxiety is one of them. For sure. So sometimes the classic person with ADD tends to have a sleepy brain mm -hmm. and give them a stimulant and they do better. Yeah. But when they gave you a stimulant, it made you more anxious. Mm, yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. And so 
what I learned early on is ADD is not one thing. Yeah. It's like seven different things. And if you give everybody the same treatment, put everybody on Adderall or everybody on Ritalin, yeah. you'll help some people. I mean, it'll be a miracle for some people. Yeah. And then it'll be a disaster yeah. for other people. And then you go, well, what's the matter with me? And it's like, well, chest pain's not one thing. Mm. Or having stomach issues isn't one thing. Yeah. Right? You have to sort of know about you. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to learn today about you. It's so exciting. Tell me about the room. I just like loved how creative and how many thoughts I had. Like I always feel like if I'm anxious, I turn to it. I would always turn to it when I was feeling lonely. It was like the cure for everything. If I want to feel creative, if I'm feeling sad, low, marijuana. If I want to get work done, marijuana. It felt like it was the answer to my focus. Like it would get me to like actually be interested in what I'm uh, about to take on and I don't know if that was the actual reality of I would get more done if I smoked, but in my mind, if I smoked, it would at least get me excited to do the thing that I'm supposed to do. Like if I smoke, then I'll clean. It'll feel more exciting to clean high than if I wasn't. Um, so I feel like I got into this loop of just like turning to it and it became just a daily habit. I've multiple times have thought like I should really stop. Like I, I, I really do value my brain and like the more I learn about from actually from your information that you share online of like, yeah, it would be really nice if I could just stop smoking weed. And I have tried a few times to stop, um, but it's really hard. I feel like I come back to it just like wanting that experience again. And yeah, it's something I do with the people I love. A lot of my friends, um, it's like in our relationship with my friends, relationship with my husband like it's been a part of me I feel like so it's really hard to detach myself from it I, I want to and I don't want to at the same time it's like this love hate well there's a difference <laughs> in the brain between wanting and liking oh. that you want to but you don't always like it yes exactly because you realize it might not be good for you and it probably isn't yeah good for you yeah do a study called SPECT, and SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how your brain works. And this is an example of a really healthy brain. Mm -hmm. And the image on the left, color doesn't matter, it's the shape. Mm -hmm. You want it to be full, even, and symmetrical. The images on the right, blue is average activity. Red and white are the most active parts mm -hmm. of the brain, so your cerebellum should be really active mm. and everything else sort of quiet. Mm -hmm. When we look at your brain, your frontal lobes here in the front, they're actually better than most people I see who have ADD. Really? Most great. people who have ADD, they have sleepy frontal lobes. Yeah. They're actually just sort of okay. Okay. But you have a bumpy brain. <laughs> and that's the middle. That there, or is there anything else that's tough? In your life. And like, I have no dog in the fight with marijuana. Yeah. More people use, I have more business. Oh. I mean, it's just clear. Yeah. But when I started looking at the brain, mm -hmm. I'm like, this makes your brain look older than you are. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that. Mm -hmm. You want your brain to look younger than you are. Yeah. Right? For sure. Uh, and this bumpiness would be, I would begin to lose the ambivalence mm. about marijuana. Because I want you to always think, does this help me feel good now and later? Right. Versus now, but not later. Mm. And this is already showing it's prematurely aging. Gotcha. That makes yeah. sense? Yeah, it does. Now, why you use is your emotional brain it's in this sort of diamond pattern yeah is you tend to worry yeah. and you can be anxious and your mood can be an issue and marijuana calms the standard. Huh. 
And so if I had to classify you in my seven types, yeah. I'd be anxious at you. And marijuana helps that. Yeah. But it's not really helping you in the long run. You become more dependent mm. on it. And so my task is yeah. about how can I balance your brain? Yeah. And if you look at your cerebellum, so if we go back to a really healthy one, yeah. full, even, symmetrical, lots of activity here. Yeah. We look at yours, well, it's good here on one side, but what the heck is happening here? Huh. It's sleepy, right? It's an area called the cerebellar vermis. And marijuana can also drop the function in your cerebellum. And that's why um, people are not as coordinated. Gotcha. Right? That yeah. makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. A lot of sense. Huh. And so one of the things I would want you to do is a lot of coordination exercises. Huh. There's actually a treatment for this called the interactive metronome, uh -huh. which is, um, I have a clinic in Washington, D.C., and one of my staff there does this treatment to introduce you to her. Cool. Um, Thank the you. The more we can activate your cerebellum, uh -huh. the more it's going to activate your frontal lobes, and your focus is going to be so much better. Wow. Thank you. So, so interesting. Um, hmm. Questions? I don't think so. This was super cool to see and just see all the different parts that are active in my brain. And I actually feel relieved a little bit that my frontal lobe's okay and that if I, you know. Yeah, you actually have really good frontal lobes. Wow, that's great. Um, <laughs> but we want your brain less toxic. Yes. Right. right. It's right. like if you could look in the mirror and you have more wrinkles than you want, that's yeah. not a good thing. <laughs> Right. Um, that there are a few more wrinkles. Uh -huh. um, I know you mentioned like aging. Would you say, is there like an age to this brain or? Yeah, it's more like 40. Wow. Um, we don't, we don't want that to be. Yeah. So let's keep your brain healthy so you don't get these sleepy frontal lobes. Yes. Are you doing supplements? You know what? I tried the focus and energy ones. I was also inconsistent with taking them. I still have some. Um, yeah, I think I just want to be more consistent with taking supplements. I love the idea of supplements, but I would say. So from a supplement standpoint, yes. multiple vitamins, fish oil, very important. They actually found it helps both ADD and anxiety. Oh, wow. And um, Focus and energy would be great for you because it can help calm you and focus you at the same time. It's yeah. like ginseng, rhodiola, ashwagandha, choline, so it can actually help with memory. Mm. And so I love it for you. Yeah. And maybe a little GABA calming to just settle things down. So yeah. from a, a, a natural way to go after this, GABA calming, focus and energy, and then we have packets, um, two packets a day of brain and body power, multiple vitamin fish oil, and a brain boost. Like a t-shirt we could do together yes. is brain envy. Oh. So what I like on the front, it says Freud was wrong. <laughs> and on the back, it says it's brain envy. <laughs> That's really funny. We can definitely do that. We can do a co-branded. <laughs> yeah, That's I think awesome. that would be super. Oh, that's awesome. Just like all of the information, I'm just so grateful. So thank you so much for sharing parts of your stories and all of it together. I'm yeah, feeling really inspired. 